when you see yourself part of society, you realize that you are here, you're valued, you can do whatever you want. Welcome to Let's Play by the Gamers, a podcast hosted by actress Kylie Vernoff. Fans know Kylie best as the fiery Susan Grimshaw in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Miranda Cowan in GTA 5. Our series features some of the most informed and exciting people in the gaming industry today. Kylie and our guests discuss careers, gaming, and so much more. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out the gamers.com website to hear exclusive bonus material from each of our guests. Hey everybody, I am so excited for you to hear this interview. Today, I talked to my dear friend, the truly magnificent actress, Michelle Hurd. Michelle has had a prolific career, appearing on literally dozens of hit TV shows, including Daredevil, Ash vs. Evil Dead, The Glades, and Blind Spot. But these days, she's known best for her riveting portrayal of Rafi on Star Trek Picard. We're old friends catching up, so you may hear a tiny bit of colorful language, but Michelle has always been an inspiration to me, and I can't wait to share her with all of you. So let's get right into it. Well, hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for making time for me today. Hello, my friend. It's so <laughs> nice to hear from you. I love talking to you. This is great. I love, oh, I love talking to you, too. So. For people who don't know, I've known you since college, which mm -hmm. is time now, a reasonable amount of time now. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle, I, I'm going to gush about you a little bit because mm -hmm. I will I will never forget the first time I met you. Yeah, you were a TA in uh, um, yeah in a movement class, right? Do you remember that room with the big the ballet bars and all the mirrors? Absolutely. That was uh, was that Bill Finley, William Finley's class? It was maybe. Yes. Yeah, it was. <laughs> And you were the TA, and I remember seeing you, and just, first of all, just your physical beauty just mm -hmm. was just arresting. Oh, oh you're so kind. That's oh. kind of me. <laughs> and you're so, you know, you have, I don't know, you know, people know you, you have this incredible physical strength and physical agility, and you held all that strength and beauty in a way that I had not seen from someone my age before. Oh, wow. That's, um, that's such a beautiful thing to say. Thank you. I don't, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I got to know you and besides all that physical beauty, you had this just enormous talent, but also your loyalty to the work, your fealty to mm. and the fierceness with which you defended your choices, mm. um, <laughs> your acting choices and your choices in life were just, uh, you've just always been so aspirational me that's so that's so kind and it's really quite a, a beautiful thing to hear from someone else about you and your impressions and when you were young because you know I I don't think I recall projecting that I think I was just um you know a, a New York kid that just got out of being such a little punk delinquent in, in Greenwich Village New York and decided <laughs> to start focusing on the things that she loved and uh tried to make a, a strong stance in, in um, focusing and working towards her goals. So I really appreciate you saying that. That's a, a beautiful look back. It's funny because I, I was doing some cleaning up in my house uh, the other day and I was going through, um, I guess you call it school reports, um, you know, from when you're in, like, I went to a private school from first to 12th grade St. Anne's in Brooklyn Heights. Oh, I didn't which is, know that. Yeah, which is a very, you know, sort of progressive school, you know, no grades, written evaluations, you, you're on the first name basis right. with and sort of develops these sort of independent um, debating, debatable people. You know, we love debating. Um, but what I loved was I was looking at some of the uh, uh, written reports and, and almost every single course <laughs> of every single teacher. And so this is this is out there for the kids who don't get the A's. Um, yes. Almost every single one, they were like, you know, Michelle, Michelle just doesn't seem interested in this subject. When she is, yeah, when she is interested, she contributes to the class, you know, wonderfully. But when she's not, she's just, she seems to just hunker down into her own space. And if she's not interested, she doesn't engage. And I thought, wow, in almost every single course. And uh, and I, I had to make a big decision, you know, and I, I didn't have this sort of, uh, you know, window into the future, but... I remember when I um, auditioned for Boston University, I was making a, a, a choice to become more engaged and more focused and more committed to 
what I wanted to um, focus my life on, acting. So it's kind of an interesting little trip down memory lane. Yeah. I, I will say that by the time I encountered you, you seemed like someone who knew who knew what her calling was, was passionate and committed to it, and um, and was also willing to bring everyone along if they were equally as dedicated. And, mm -hmm. uh, and actually, maybe that last part isn't right, because mm -hmm. I actually think that you were always someone who was accepting of uh, mistakes. I felt like I, mm -hmm. could, I could fuck up a little in front of you and, and still have a place at the table. Oh, yes, absolutely. I think that the most powerful thing that we all can do is learn from mistakes and is to, you know, like how, how wonderful it is to try to fail, you know, to try to do something and not succeed and then go, oh, that didn't work. Let's see, how can we do that again and try to try to get what I want this time or achieve farther this time or be heard clearer this time? I think it's the most, um, that's the most informative times, really. So tell me about this this whirlwind of press that you're on right now. What is that like? Have you have you done anything this intense with press before? No, you know, it's crazy. It's a, um, it's a crazy little adventure that I'm on, and I'm so very thankful and grateful. Um, I've been doing this, as you know, uh, for almost 30 years. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really just uh, so humbled and so thankful and grateful. I mean, Star Trek Picard with Patrick Stewart is uh, <laughs> is, a, is a gift that a woman of a certain age could only dream of, you know, and um, yeah. I mean, they are rolling it out. We have, uh, you know, we're on CBS All Access in the States and in, in Europe, we're in uh, Amazon Prime. And so while we've been in Europe, Amazon has been taking care of us and we've gone to, we've had a huge, beautiful um, premiere in London and Berlin where they welcomed us with open arms. We've gone to the Comic Cons in uh, in uh, Italy and Luca, Italy, and in Paris and in San Paolo, Brazil. Oh. Um, we it would, it's just been it's just been a whirlwind um, fairy tale. And um, but what I wanted to say is that you know for these thirty years um, of doing all the different types of work I've done on stage and television and film, whether it's a, a guest, uh, a day player, a recurring character, or a series regular, I've always entered my medium, whatever stage that is, the exact same way. Completely committed to um, doing the best I can, trying to be as generous as I can to every actor and person I interact with. Um, always acknowledging that it takes all of us to make a, a you know, to do this, the project that we're focused on. I've never sort of gone, oh, well, I'm number so-and-so on the list, so now I'm, you know, <laughs> oh, 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 you know, it's, it's never been that. I, I, and I owe that to my parents for grounding me and, and um, you know, sh really spreading the beauty of what art is from acting to dancing to singing to going to a museum and seeing paintings and sculptures and going to the theater here in New York. You know, it, it takes a, a village to create beautiful pieces of art. And it's just such a, uh, I, I hate to say satisfying, but it's it's such a lovely, rewarding experience right now to know that I've been so... Um, I've never puffed up. <laughs> I've yeah. always been sort of um, grounded. And to the fact that I walk on set now and I work with Sir Patrick Stewart, I mean, I just, uh, it's, a, it's a real blessing to, um, and a truth that if you do your work, it will come. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about what an incredible this thing must be to have the, you know, the classical training that mm. you have all of your television experience and, and, and all of it, and to have it sort of culminate in this yes. thing, I mean, with Sir Patrick Stewart. And um, I, I think I, I, I saw you say in an interview um, about how, you know, you're a, you're a procedural girl that you come mm -hmm. from that kind of television and you thought that was the place to tell these gritty stories. Mm -hmm. um, but how now you're finding that this place in sci-fi is, it's really the place to be for real storytelling. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, I, I don't think I, I realize that, you know, and I love sci-fi. I love sci -fi, science fiction, science fantasy, you know, all of that. But I've, for the majority of my life, I've been a procedural girl. I, I've done like five shows with Dick Wolf, you know, I, I yeah. you know, and I've always thought, right, I've always thought, you know, this is how you push the agenda. You know, you're, we're really serious We're you know, it's, it's very um, uh, contemporary, you could look out your window and you would see what the same thing that we're seeing on television, you know, it's yes, like, it's right in this headlines. switch. That's right. Exactly. And, 
And, you know, I'd always joke with my agents that whenever there was a part, like an option, you know, whether it was to, to wear heels or carry a gun, I would choose the gun every time, you know, and I'm like, I'm the, I'm the boss, the cop, the this, the that. And I didn't realize that until I got this job that the real stories of humanity are told um, under the awning of sci-fi. You know, you can get away with talking about immigration. You can get away about talking about discrimination, uh, inclusion, exclusion, otherisms, all those things by just having the, the character be blue or, um, you know, hairy from head to toe or, you know, whatever disguise or, you know, um, character creation that the writers had, have, have donned. And that ability lets us tell a story, get behind the person's um, exterior, seeing their heart, seeing their uh, perspective, understanding their value, you know, how valuable they all are to life in general. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's just, you know, and, and to, to sort of be, once again, at this time in, in my career, um, to have that full understanding and then to just sort of wrap my arms around and go, oh, this is, I'm an actor and an activist. This is where I've always meant to be. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be telling these stories. And uh, I love, I mean, sci-fi, it's, it, it's one of those things that you can, we could actually probably get all the kinds of Republicans and Democrats all together, you know, yes. people of different, different faiths, different, um, uh, you know, eating habits. You can get everybody together to talk about uh, something they watched on sci-fi and, and it can unite, you know, art is, is powerful that way. I was reading that this, that your show has adopted that, that, um, the Vulcan philosophy, mm. the IDIC, right? Infinite diversity, infinite mm. combinations. Mm. That's so beautiful. It's, it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. I mean, it, it's, you know, when I, I was at the, uh, I guess the LA premiere, that was the first time that we as a cast got to see the show. They did three episodes. It was like a two hour movie over at the Cinerama Dome. I mean, it was crazy. Oh, how cool. Iconic, it was amazing. And you know, from almost the first few 10, 15 minutes that you watch it there, you could just see that we are telling a story of a, a, of a fully mixed, integrated world, you know, with, it still has its problems, obviously, as, as any type of um, life force will. Uh, but it was just such a beautiful thing you know, I love the fact that Isa Briones, she's mixed, she's Eurasian. Evan Igora is, is, you know, Maori. Um, we're, you've got a bunch of mixy people in the show. And, um, you know, I, I, I carry that with, with uh, honor and pride. And I understand that there's little, you know, beige colored kids with curly hair out there that gets to see that, uh, see themselves represented in, on television. And, and I, I love the fact that I can sort of own my curly hair, even in 2400 in space. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, I think you were also, I, I heard you talk about um, about how your father, who was an actor, made mm. sure that you guys consumed media as kids that that showed people like you, that yeah. were inclusive, where you were represented. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've been thinking about this a lot um, First, when I first got this job, I had a flashback um, to being in the living room with my family. And I remember my father, you know, uh, encouraging us all to sit down and watch Star Trek. And uh, my dad's, a, I'm biracial, my dad's black, my mother's white. And, um, you know, there were times where he was doing jobs that he didn't, he didn't want us to come see because he was playing, you know, the, uh, the butler or the Uncle Tom, the, you know, kind of step and fetch kind of thing. And he was yeah. really um, prideful, you know, and, and it was really important for him that his three girls saw themselves represented and, you know, watching Star Trek and watching Captain Kirk and Uhura kiss on, on screen. I mean, that was the first time there was an interracial kiss on television ever. And in Star about, Trek. Wow. In Star Trek. And, and I think about that. I think about my parents, my, my, my white and black parents who got married during the time of you know, Dr. King getting assassinated, Malcolm getting assassinated, Bobby, John get, getting uh, assassinated, that it must have seemed like the sky was falling. And um, I asked my mother about that often. And, you know, she says, well, we, you know, what, what were we going to do? We were not going anywhere. We're here. We're going to persist. We're going to stay true to ourselves and we're going to let our voices be heard. And um, it's amazing that when I got this job, I had this whole sort of 
you know, whirlwind experience of how how much my parents have been activists and fighting for the rights of people who um, are be, are you know don't have voices all the time, and that I'm sort of carrying on that mantle by working on a, a show that is since it started, you know, back in the day, that was one of its main um, focus was hum human story, humanity, life stories, you know. Um, and, and the fact that we have clashes and we have to figure out how do we get along because we have to, even, you know, we're on one planet here in Star Trek, we're in the universe, there's the galaxy and still we all need to try to figure out how to get along. I just got chills up and down. I love that you are carrying that mantle that was mm. given by your artist parents. Mm. It's an um, honor. It is such an honor. Uh, and I love that um, in in this version in Star Trek Picard, right? You you all call yourselves the the Motley Crew, right? You're mm -hmm. operating outside the system. Yeah, and I love that too because when we uh, I think when we were in I don't know it might have been when we were in Paris or Italy or something we put a little WhatsApp um, you know group together so that we could uh, we would talk to each other and be able to meet up and and I just like you know I was like man let's just call it the Motley Crew because we're we're the Motley Crew, and I love that it's, <laughs> you're like, yep, we are the Motley Crew. <laughs> I love that. I love, like, you know, you're having to work outside the system. And and in addition to all of this, this beautiful uh, representation across different cultures and ages, I love what's happening with Rafi mm. being an addict. That was one of the, yeah, I have to say, it, it was really interesting when I am, um, and, and you, you'll understand, you, you know, you could um, relate to this. When I got the audition for this, it was a, you know, an email at like 9:30 p.m. on a Wednesday for mm -hmm. self tape the next day. <laughs> you of know course I mean? it was. Of course it was. Of course yeah. it was. And uh, you know, and I, I, I was actually going in to have foot surgery from my decades of doing martial arts in a concrete dojo. Thank you very much. Ouch. Um, um, right uh, the next morning, and I, I, you know, I saw that this audition for next day. And I'm like, ah, I can't do this. It's not going to happen. And I thought, well, you know, you have to be a good little good actress and read the information that's given to you. So you know what you're saying, whether you're saying, you know, passing on something. And, um, I looked at the character breakdown and the character breakdown was so well vetted. It was so complex. It was so delicious. It was better than anything I've ever read before. And then I looked a little further and was looking at the producers and I saw Akiva Goldsman and Alex Kurtzman and, and Patrick Stewart and I thought okay wait a second what what's going on here what is this right because um, they they hold it so tight I'm sure it didn't yeah. say Star Trek anywhere no, on it it, it yeah. said uh, drawing room you know of course I've called... auditioned for your show and it came under some name where I was like <laughs> what is this <laughs> I know right I think we've had like drawing room royal Fr flush we've had crazy names but um yes. but yeah I I I called my peoples and I was just, or emailed them and said, uh, you know, I can't do this tomorrow. Uh, can, is there any way that I can get it in on Monday, you know, over the weekend? And, uh, they said, sure, sure. No problem. So I go have my foot operation. I come home on Thursday and um, I get an email from my people. Um, and they're like, so sorry, honey, they really need it by end of day tomorrow, which is just insane. And you know how they do that. And it's, it, it's never true. You know, you're it's like, never you know, true, but... it's never true, but they always, they make you feel like you have to get it in. Yeah. Um, this was a 11 page scene, five minutes, five full minutes, 11 pages. And, um, I just had an operation, you know, and I, I, you know, I looked at my husband and I was like, damn, damn it. You know, I, uh, it's, it's just such a well-written scene. It's such a well-written character. Oh, I'm just going to have to try to do it. So I, uh, that, you know, Thursday I, I rested. Friday, I weaned myself off of the oxy. Thank you very much. I was going to say uh, you must have been jacked up on something post. Oh my God, it was it was awful. I mean, foot surgery is no joke. That's pain. That's there's all your nerves down there. So it was really no no joke. And I, I weaned myself off for like I took like one oxy um, every like seven or eight hours, and it was brutal. My husband had his little iPhone. We did the self tape app. I had sweats on my you know wearing sweats and put a nice top on. Pulled my hair up. Slapped a little makeup on. I did two takes. First take, I really enjoyed the beginning part. Didn't like the second, the last part. Second take, I didn't like the beginning part, but I liked this last part. And I, I just, I was just too tired, um, too frustrated to try to do a, a, a solid one. And I said, you know what? I'm never going to get this. Just send it off. Just send off those two things. Let it go. Um, 
and then a week later, <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit more to that. I they they I think they called in and said that I was pinned, which I know you understand as well. And I can't stand being pinned. You know, I always joke with my um, agents that when they say you've been pinned for a project, have I been pinned with like, have they hammered the pin in? Is it a pin <laughs> like with a little just pushed in by a pinky? Is it going to pop out? You know, what, what, how, how is it a staple? Right. Is it a staple? Is it, <laughs> is it tape? Was it just a little piece of tape? What do we got here? Um, so that um, that week went by, and then I think at the end of the week, uh, the pin fell out like it does. And I thought, oh, whatever. Not and always, I, but it, often. But often sometimes, right? So then I went, uh, you know, I was continuing on with uh, pilot season here in New York on crutches, you know, mobilizing. And um, that next week, I had, there was a project that I was going to test for, a different project, and I was perfectly fine with it. And... Um, Star Trek people called back and they said, uh, you know, we'd like to pin her again. And my people said, well, it's too late. We're going to be, we're setting up a test deal um, coming up in the next week. They hung, you know, they hung up. Uh, uh, we waited an hour. They called back and said, um, we'd like to offer her the role of our Rafi. And um, what oh, I love, yeah, oh, cool. what I love best. about that, what I love about that story, um, and I really want actors to hear, is that, you know, I didn't do perfect take. There was not one perfect take I did. I, what I wanted to do was give you the feeling of who this woman was. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted you to understand her struggle. And the scene, it touched about, uh, about her addiction. And I thought, this is really important to tell the story in the way of somebody who is still incredibly valuable to society, but is hurting and is doing her very, very best to wake up in the morning, but needs a vice. She needs a crutch to lean on. She's haunted. She has regrets. She's beats herself up because of the past decisions, but she's trying. She's really trying to get back into the world of the living. And we all, if we all haven't experienced our own personal addictions, we have people in our lives that have had addictions. And, you know, those demons on the shoulders, those monkeys on the shoulder, whatever you want to call them, are real. And, you know, I think it's incredibly important for us to, uh, to have space for those people to, to go through their battles and, and, and know that you can reach out and take their hand and lift them up. Uh, and even if they don't want to take your hand, um, you should always remember, you know, try to reach out to them and, and, and give them the space to heal and to work through their um, addictions. Because we're, we're, all, we're all here and we're all, you know, allowed to stumble and fall and get up again. Um, and we shouldn't write people off just because they're, because they're haunted by, by, by their, own, their own, you know, challenges. I am so glad that you're talking about that. Um, mm. that we talk about inclusion, right? And mm. and um, this the, this gamers platform that uh, this that is hosting this podcast is, that's really important to them to talk about inclusion. And we talk a lot about that. Mm. But hearing you speak about uh, people who, who are suffering from addiction mm. and, and 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 having them represented in that way that was new to me and. Mm -hmm. And I do. I, I I grew up in a family that was just riddled with addiction. It, you know, yeah. it was the hallmark of my childhood: uh, alcoholism and addiction. And um, and it's really easy to write people off. You know, your yeah. character has this line that you gave that I heard, where you said, "The last fourteen years have been one long slide into humiliation and rage." Yes. 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 Uh, and that you know, uh, think about yeah, yeah. I know that. Right? Humiliation and rage, those two things. I mean, they're powerful. They're destructive. They're they're painful. <laughs> they're really, painful. Really painful. And it's very easy to write someone off who has hurt you, or mm. uh, you know, right? Because people suffering from addiction tend to isolate and remove themselves from the That's people right. that love who love them. Um, and, and hearing you talk about that and the way you just spoke about it, I, I, I don't think I've ever really heard that before. Not, not on, 
um, not in the way you're doing it. And I think it's so important and I think it's really going to help a lot of people, Michelle. Oh, I hope so. I really, and I really wanted to tell the story in such a truthful human way um, so that we could all see, you know, recognize these, this person, whether it's recognize it in ourselves or in our, you know, people that we know. And, and also just to know that, you know, addiction comes in so many different forms. You know, there's people, you know, there's a blanketed concept of, 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 you know, of alcohol or, or drugs, um, you know, but there's, you know, we've got pills, we've got, we've got exercise, we've got, um, eating disorders, we've got, um, relationship disorders, you know, a, a serial yeah. relationship person, you know, we, there's so many things and to be able to try to, to put a face on what it looks like to, um, it's almost like a slow torture to yourself, you know, you're beating yourself up and, um, you know, if we can try to, 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 to be able to re recognize that in people who are, um, hurting and maybe have a little more space and patience and time and um and and help because we're all you know we all are just trying to do our best you know you're just trying to do your best every day and sometimes that is 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 almost impossible yeah i really love you can see that with rafa you can see that you know she's been in this isolation just married to her addiction and and seeing her make make a choice to to re-enter the world it mm. is it's just gorgeous, and you play her so gorgeously. Oh, thank you, honey. And I, you know, Mike, I got to give it to Michael Chabon. You know, our one of our executive producers, writers. He, um, he and I talked a lot about that, and I really wanted to make sure that even, you know, that it, that there'll be stumbles. You know, that there's a uh, the up and down, and the you know, um, it's not a smooth ride, uh, but that, uh, but that that she's on her journey, that she's fighting, she's fighting to be part of the the world. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. So tell me a little bit about um, about the fans, because you know, mm. I've always followed your career. You've done a lot of shows that, you know, have a rabid fan base like Daredevil, Gossip Girl. But I'm guessing that there's nothing that reaches the level of these diehard Trekkies. Right. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> nothing like it. I, I think uh, the first uh, the first Comic-Con that we all went to was the San Diego Comic-Con, which oh, is a big yeah. one. And and I keep joking with my castmates. I was like, you know, if you're going to do Comic-Con, you should do it with Patrick Stewart. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's like the seas I, open, you know. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that's like. I mean, it's, to be dropped into this just beloved franchise must be uh, uh, incredible. It's 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 phenomenal. It's incredible. And, uh, and so, you know... I'm so humbled, you know, I, I understand it, I get it. I'm, I've am i been a, a, a Trekkie fan, my entire family is a Trekkie fan. In fact, when the uh, comic book, there's a comic book that uh, I'm in, which is crazy, uh, when that came out, when that dropped, my one of my castmates, Jonathan Del Arco, sent me a picture of it and I was with my nephews and I like screamed out loud and my I eldest I saw it, sister, Michelle, and it looks you? just like you. It's, it's crazy, you. it's crazy, it's oh my God. Uh, my my eldest sister Denise, because um, she's a huge Trekkie and and uh, graphic novel uh, fan, she literally went to four different comic book stores here in New York and like you know tackled one one of the owners and was like, my sister's Rafi, you have to save me a you know a copy and uh, it's it's been incredible. The fans have been so warm, so welcoming, so loving, so accepting. I mean, they've just embraced us and. We are, uh, you know, and, and as I said, I'm I'm so honored to be part of this. I I, I completely get it. Um, I am ecstatic to contribute to this world, uh, and you know, not for nothing, this is an amazing, you know, cast and crew. Our writers and our directors have given us a, a an amazing ten episode movie, so to speak, to take on on a journey. I love the fact that, um, you know, Picard and Patrick have, uh, you know you know, they've aged in the time that we last saw Picard in, in Next Gen and he, um, and as has Patrick and he's been impacted by the world and um, both of them, Patrick and Picard have both been impacted by the world and, and you're going to see that perspective and I think it's an amazing thing that we have the perspective of a man of a certain age um, on television because we got a lot of people of that age who are here 
and their perspective has not been focused on or highlighted. It's usually, you know, put in the corner. You know, I'll tell you, and for me, like, I love getting older in this business yep. and I thought I would hate it. I know, right? But having a mature perspective, I, I, I mean, you know, it, it's, we're so underrepresented and that's changing. It's yeah. changing, but you become so aware of it when you, when you hear like middle, you read middle-aged so-and-so, yeah. you know, the wrong side of 40. They will oh literally God. write that shit in there. I know it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I, you know, you know, I've gotten over cause I'm, I'm the mother of grown humans at this point. You know, like when I did blind spot, I was like, I'm how many of you am I the mother of? I'm just asking. So <laughs> each of you with the gray hair that I'm your mother as well. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, and that's the thing is that, you know, we're honestly, as you just said, I feel I'm much more, um, I've just got so much more to contribute at this age. You know, I, I think that we validate situations now, you know, you can put us in a show and when we come on, you, you're, you validate that scene. You're not this sort of fluffy thing in the corner, but we have our leader is um, aware of life, of mortality. Uh, and of the choices that, you know, that really become more valuable as we, um, as we mature. I think this is phenomenal. God, I really hadn't thought about that, but yeah. you're so right. That, that is a perspective that is so often lost. Mm. Mm -hmm. we, we have, you know, people put in as grandparents and right. off to the side and um, to really just to have, to have his perspective and have that be at the helm. And also to have, you know, I, I think you said that, um, that his his understanding of the canon mm. uh, that he'll that he will literally stop a scene to say the fans will know this isn't right. Uh, oh, absolutely! It's amazing. I mean, what's so beautiful is that uh, Akiva and, and Michael ha are huge, longtime Trekkie fans, mm. um, and so you have your executive producer and your head writer being a huge Trekkie fan, and then you have Patrick, you know, the the Star Trek you know, icon or, you know, whatever we want to refer to him as. And he's so respectful of the fans. We often, not often, I should say, there's, I, I know there was like three times where we were shooting and Patrick stopped, you know, and he was like, this is not right, right? The, the fans will know that this is not right. We need to tell the proper story, you know? And what I love is that our producers, our directors, our writers will stop and we'll all sit down, we'll vet it out, we'll talk and we'll try to figure out how do we tell the, the, this story or this point of view in a more, um, um, you know, correct way for the canon. And we do it. We change it. It's, uh, it's, it's you know, and as you know, I, I, you know, I've been doing this for such a long time on so many different sets. I've never experienced that before, that we will literally just stop, throw out the script and come up with a new way of telling the scene. It's, um, oh. it's pretty, it's amazing. It's an amazing it experience. It's so live to keep yes. it just, it's, it's a, it's a live story that you're telling. Yes. Yes. And you have, you know, a master actor, you know, you have, uh, Patrick Stewart who is fully alive whenever you're acting with him. I mean, he's, it's the, he's one of the most giving actors I've ever had the privilege of sharing space with. And, um, he keeps you, you know, in the moment, right in the scene. And, and it's so fluid. It's so, um, it's like breath, you know, you take a deep breath. He takes a deep breath. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's really I beautiful. Can, I can feel that when I watch, I can feel that, that, mm. you know, that what's happening there is authentic and, oh, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I, I, I just love watching it. I love seeing it. It's so inspiring and awesome. Oh, honey, thank you so much for saying that. I, I you know, I, it, it's weird because I've, I, I often have a hard time watching myself as many actors do. We just don't, you know, you're like, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I should have done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I got to say, you know, watching Pat, uh, um, Star Trek, I'm so, I'm just involved in those characters. Like I'm in it. I'm in it. I want to be in their stories. I want to, you know, I want to know how it comes out. And I, I just love how perfectly imperfect Rafi is. I love that I don't, uh, I, uh, that she can stumble, that she can, you know, make good and bad decisions. I love, I love, you know, Rios and Agnes and, and Elnor and, you know, Soji and I just, you know, everybody's, the characters are just, um, it's, it's a, it's an amazing uh, adventure. It's an amazing adventure and, and I'm so thankful for. You know, I was thinking that when I was um, growing up, when I was maybe in high school, 
I think I thought of Star Trek and sci-fi in general as more of a, like a boys club. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that like, you know, I, you know, I had a lot of male friends that were really into Star Trek and I, you know, I I'd sort of learn about right. it from them. I think that more and more, it seems like girls and women are huge fan of the whole genre. Oh, yeah. I think so. It was, are you finding that when you oh, get out absolutely. there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have there's, uh, you know, the women almost out out number the men. I, I can't remember. I guess it must have been San Diego. Um, the first the first Comic-Con that we did when our teaser at the end of the teaser, um, uh, Jerry Ryan, you know, uh, seven of nine. Um, yeah. shows up and the stadium like lost their shit. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> it was the most beautiful experience. You know, they just lost it because, you know, they, you, there's all of a sudden this powerful, you know, Borg woman, you know, right on screen and they just love her. And um, more and more during our, our Comic Cons, when we get to interact with the um, the fans, you really see how the women are just so thankful that we're, giving them strong characters, diverse characters, interesting characters, um, integral characters, characters that, that contribute and, and need to be there, not, you know, just dressed up and, you know, put on the side. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think um, times, they are changing. And they women, are. I mean, yes. you see it with, with Star Wars, with Marvel. Yes. You know, you know they're, and I think that when they branch out that way, they see that we show up because representation matters, right? These girls want to see themselves. Represent, I mean, I, that, you know, goes back to like my, you know, when I got this job, you know, I don't think I realized how important it is to see yourself represented. You know, I, I think of the two, my two nephews, um, two brown boys. And um, when I grew up in my, you know, I don't know, first, second, third, fourth grade, classrooms, they'd have all the pictures of the presidents, you know, around the room. And for my entire, you know, majority of my life, it was, you know, old white men. And all I can think of now is that my two nephews, when they sit in that kind of a a scenario, there's a black man there, which if you, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to measure how that impacts you, but it really does. When you see yourself part of society, you realize that you are here, you're valued, you can contribute, you can do whatever you want. When I, you know, back in the day, it was funny because I was thinking about um, uh, uh, movies and things that I watched, you know, what I grew up on or, or, you know, when I want to show it to my goddaughters or my nephews and you start looking back at old movies and you realize that, um, you know, there's not a lot of representation of people of color. (laughs) I loved MGM classics, you know, uh, as I grew up here in in, uh, New York and the Waverly Place Theater always used to play um, MGM musicals on the weekends and that's what we'd we'd go see. And I love them. When I look at them now, it's it's crazy (laughs) because I'm not represented there at all. We're not, we're not there. We're not in the world of this entertainment. And, um, and that I think really, you know, sends a message. So the fact that sci-fi and, you know, as you said, all the different movies and Marvel and, and um, all the different shows are, are, are bringing not only women to the forefront, but people of color to the forefront, we're going to see a lot more voices being um, strengthened in our society. And I, I think women and women of color are going to be, as you see, as we see in, in even in our politics, are, are really going to be pushing the agenda and, um, uh, you know, becoming much more important and in, in, in contributors. It's interesting because, you know, the women in society in general, like, go back in time, women have always been the entity that push things forward. You know, we, you know, if you think about slave days, you know, women wanted to be able to marry so that they could, you know, continue their families and, and be considered, you know, a uh, human, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, women wanted to be able to vote so they could hear, have their voices be uh, uh, recorded and their opinions being valued. I mean, women are powerful creatures and um, I think, uh, you know, thank goodness for sci-fi. <laughs> Thank goodness for sci-fi. Yes, absolutely. Oh, Michelle, this has just been incredible. And as I'm winding down here, I wanted mm. to, um, as we talk about your nephews and yeah. things changing for this younger generation, I, I would love to give you an 
uh, an opportunity to, to tell me about a time in, in your life or in your career when, when someone saw something really special in you and just gave you an opportunity to, to shine? You know, it's a, it's an interesting question. Um, uh, cause it, it causes you to reflect back, you know, and always my, um, my parents have always been the, you know, biggest fans for sure. You know, without a doubt. I, I think a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people can say that. Um, but if I looked outside my family, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting cause you, you know, her too. Uh, Normie Noel, um, who was our voice teacher in Boston University. Yes. She, there was something about her that I just, I felt seen and supported and encouraged by. She just touched my, my heart. I, I don't know what it is about her, but there was something that I really felt when other teachers may have, um, I don't know, brushed me aside or made assumptions of me, she really um, reached out to me and, and encouraged me to um, explore and, and, you know, continue to be as kind of wild and crazy and adventurous as I, um, that is part of my, my core. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, Normie Noel really, um, really, uh, you know, has a, holds a special place in my heart, I have to say. I love that. Yeah. I love that she encouraged you to keep being adventurous and wild oh, and crazy. That she wasn't absolutely. trying to get you to fit into uh, a mold. Exactly. Encouraging you to find who you were. That's exactly right. And, you know, I felt, uh, and, you know, we both, we went to the same school. So, you know, there were times where you felt like you had to either be this person or that person. You know, there's actors who sort of, they, our school sort of put in categories, you know, that lead person, the this, the that. I, I think when I went to uh, BU, I played every single different ethnic character, which, yeah. you know, at, at a certain point I wanted to say that to, to the, you know, powers that be, guess what guys, I, I don't need to work on being a minority. I got that down. Like I walk <laughs> into a room, people go, you're a minority. Copy that. You know, I don't, I don't need that. The, the reason I go to, uh, you know, you go to a university and you pay your money is the, to have the opportunity to play Juliet, not just the maid, you know? And um, I, I remember being, you know, I would battle with BU a lot. And one of the people who really stood by my side and, and just never made me feel like an other uh, was Normie Noel. I became really um, vulnerable with her. Like I, she was allowed to see my vulnerable side, my, my soft side, my, my, um, the side that needed help, you know? And I don't think, it, there, I know that there was not any other teacher in that school that I allowed to see that or um, encouraged me to show that. So, yeah. Oh, that's really beautiful. I hadn't thought about her in so long. And so yeah, right. you said you her name that. and I just got this like warm fuzzy. She also taught us how to like have a career in voiceover when we got out. I know, right? Thank like, you very much. I was much, able no to money. like support myself doing plays for no money. Yep, I know, <laughs> right? Our no paying theater gig jobs. Exactly. I, I felt like I had to go to AA for that for a period at some moment. I'm like, did I say yes again? <laughs> God damn it. I said yes again. <laughs> I said, I said yes. And I'm going to have to like help them pay the theater fees. Exactly. What's wrong with me? <laughs> exactly. I'm, I bring my broom because I clean up afterwards. I like, think, oh, yeah. God, I am just thrilled that you were able to make time for this today. You know, you have always been just a mold breaker for mm. me in my eyes. And I I know how busy you are, but mm. our listeners are going to gain so much from hearing from you. Oh, honey. Well, thank you for saying that. And you too, my dear. You know, I'm really proud of you. You're, you know, you are working and striving and you are owning your power. And uh, just this forum right here. Um, you know, really highlights that, that your, uh, you know, your strength and um, generosity um, is boundless and you are touching people, um, you know, more than we realize. And uh, I thank you for that. So, yeah. Why let's, you want to uh, make me cry? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying true words, my love, just true words. And it's really, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I'm excited for this journey that we all get to, uh, you know, go on and pave the way for those to follow us. Yeah. Because I have to say, you know, being a, the daughter of uh, 
of activists, um, art and activism is really, um, you know, go hand in hand. And um, we have a, 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 the ability to create a language that can touch everybody, regardless of, you know, race, you know, religion, um, all of it. Uh, this is a way that we can reach out and empower people and unite. And uh, so I thank you so very much for doing this and inviting me to, um, to experience it with you. It has just been an absolute pleasure. So thank you, Michelle Hurd. Thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> All right. Love you, love you, love you. Love you, love you. Well, I hope you're all feeling a little more inspired after that one. I know I am. Star Trek Picard airs on CBS All Access. Check our show notes for how to stream it now. And you can also stay connected with Michelle by checking out her socials. It's at Real Michelle Heard on Instagram and on Twitter at It's Michelle Heard. Thank you for listening. Let's Play was brought to you by The Gamers, a community that connects all gamers who identify as women and welcomes people of all genders who support this. Let's Play was co-produced by Kylie Vernoff, Jenny Grossa, and The Gamers team, Laura Deutsch, Rebecca Dixon, Heather Awida, and me, Verna Maloney. Please visit thegamers.com for show notes, to access exclusive bonus material, and to learn more about The Gamers community. And if you liked what you heard, we'd so appreciate it if you subscribed and gave us a five-star review. Thanks again for listening.